Welcome back, guys. It's Drew for Dynamic Menace. And it's been a few days, right? It's been about a week. Uh, we've been playing some other things uh, for Spooky Season. Halloween, Karyon, uh Curse to Golf. Uh, and I haven't made as much time for this game as I, as I would have liked to. If I remember correctly, we are going into the spider's nest right that's what we we're doing we fought a giant spider but she was just like one of the babies apparently i think i said it before i got a thing with spiders so i don't know i'm already a little uneasy here this all looks like a nightmare did i miss where the pig went oh wait maybe over here down here this is bottomless pit. Uh, screw it. Okay. Uh, I don't like this. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, I don't like this. Ugh, I, don't, I don't want it. 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 Oh, the gilby heebie jeebies. Ooh, okay. Maybe they're, maybe some of them are friendly. They're friendly spiders, right? Is there any movies or books or any media at all that has like friendly spiders outside of Charlotte's web is there anything are they always depicted as like little little minions for Satan hi maybe that spider was friendly right maybe I fell down that pit and he rescued me and brought me back to like his little spidery bachelor pad so I came to. He's making grilled cheeses in the kitchen right now. Waiting for me to wake up. Oddly enough, this level kind of fits right in for spooky season. Shit. Because if I was in a location that looked anything like this, I would be wrapping my pants. Ooh. Can't you guys be friendly? All right. Ugh. All right. I gotta kill these spider kids. Where's the other one? I know there are two. Where you at? Shit, 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 shit. Out of the way, out of the way. Drink, drink, drink. Okay. Fuck. with you sir I think it's funny to fucking shoot shit at people alright okay I'm uh I'm gonna get through this we're gonna get through this we're gonna be alright alright oh shit it's a moth it's a moth guy and he's like a one of the ringleader guys cause he's glowing you can tell so he becomes uh one of my gladiators. Shit. Come on, dude. Come on. Frank. Frank. Oh, 
Come on. Come on. Get him. Now you belong to me. Get in the bottle. We're going to be besties. All right. He was guarding something. Did we get something good? What was that? Gold tree core. What do those do? It's for like crafting armor and items and things. Oh, you know what? As freaked out as I am uh, playing this, it's a... Uh, Definitely have the heebie-jeebies, but it's actually kind of soothing, you know. Uh, on the last day or two, like I've been doing stuff I need to do, you know, going to work, going to work out, um, doing little things for our podcast and things like that. But I'm also, like I'm sure a lot of people are, I'm uh, I'm on social media a little bit. And for whatever reason, my feed has become polluted with a lot of, um, putting in, saying negative imagery would be like brought. It's like a lot of like really negative depictions of like relationships and things like that. And people acting really shitty. And it's definitely, I caught it. I recognized that that's what's making me feel kind of shitty, you know? Hold on, can I get down here? But it's affecting how I feel, like my mood, you know, being around people, like, uh, this is informing me that people are shitty, and it's getting me to think in that direction, or being mistrustful. Um, I don't know what I clicked on that started filtering all this stuff to me, that, start, that had the algorithm thinking I want to see this shit, uh, but it's a lot of, especially like janky relationship stuff, like people doing shady stuff to like one another. Um, and it's like, I've started dating this new girl and she's been awesome. She hasn't done anything to like make me feel some type of way about what we got going on, you know? Um, thankfully, like I kind of recognize that. That it's not her. It's kind of what I'm fucking consuming, you know? On social media. It's kind of telling me that, like... Girls and people are, are shady, you know? That shit can affect you. It's starting to get to me, you know? Because, like, a lot of... A lot of what's... Coming through my feed is... You know, the stuff like, oh, this guy had to go to prison for however many years. Then when he got out, he took a paternity test. He went to prison for not paying child support. Then when he got out, he took a paternity test and found out the kid that he went to prison for not paying child support for wasn't even his. And the look on the chick's face was like, yeah. And they were like, do you know who the father is? She's like, yeah, I'm still in contact with him. Like, that's some seriously fucked up shit. I'm sure it's an... These kind of cases are like outlier situations. I know they do happen. And I've seen shady shit, you know, here and there. Uh, but I know it's it's not it's not the rule, you know. Uh there was one instance where like I remember like I used to work at this bar, right? I was a manager there. And we we weren't paying attention to him, but they were definitely there. Like, there wasn't a ton of people in there. It was, like, middle of the week. There was this chick. She was in there with this dude, and they are hardcore, like, busting slobs at the bar. Like, making out real hard. Which is not uncommon, you know? People are drunk, and they get all lovey-dovey, and, like, you know, or they get horny, and they want to fuck, you know? So we weren't paying any attention. <clears throat> um, No red flags there. Then, uh, what did draw our attention was we saw this other dude kind of walk in and he seemed kind of frazzled and, uh, he was hanging out by himself and the girl 
the woman who was making out with this other guy gets up and goes to the bathroom. We weren't paying attention, so I couldn't tell if it was because she saw the guy walk in. But she goes to the bathroom. The guy gets up, grabs her purse, and runs out. That did, like, alert us, you know? Dude had this big-ass fucking bag under his arm. He's, like, trying to fucking hustle out the door. So we thought he was trying to fucking steal her shit. Um... Oh shit, hold on. Uh oh. And we caught him and we held him. And uh, we we're trying to get the woman to come out of the bathroom, you know, so we can get her, her purse back. And I don't remember what we were gonna, I think we were trying to call the police or something. And the guy, as he was sitting there, he was like telling us, he's like, no, that's my fiance. We we're getting married next month. I was taking her on a trip tomorrow we were leaving tomorrow to go i don't remember where it was it was like the bahamas or some shit and uh whoop. and he said he just i don't remember how he tracked her down but he was like now she's in here fucking make it out with this dude and he was just he was hard down like almost crying you know he was incredibly emotional understandably so but that's all I could think to do in that moment was just fucking grab her shit and get the fuck out, you know? Um, and I have like a career in experiences like that, seeing people do shady shit, you know? But I know it's just because I've been in the bar industry, in and out of the bar industry for so long, you know? You see people who are drunk and doing shitty things to each other, you know? But I'd like to think that in my older age, I've gained enough wisdom to know that, you know, this is a very specific fish tank, you know? And if you go out into the regular world, they're, they're normal and good people, you know? And my experience isn't the only experience to be had. It's just where my environment, you know? What the fuck? Oh, dude. Oh, you fuck. Um, it's the same thing. Uh, social media can definitely kind of be like an environment uh, that can influence your your point of view and perspective. I'm trying not to let it bog me down. Um, honestly, I did just kind of get out of a, a situation that was really bad with the chick. It was really fucking awful. Um, and I'm trying not to let that bog me down and influence me negatively in, you know, continuing to date and hang out and enjoy a romantic company you know uh just because you get one bad apple doesn't mean you should stop you know and that's the funny thing is that was my belief for a long time like i went through a real bad breakup like in 2013 and for a long time not because of her but because i went out afterwards i'm spilling my, my guts i'm dumping my purse out today I broke up with this girl. It was a really messy breakup. We had been together too long. We stayed together too long. Uh, I think we just got comfortable. Um, but I think it went stale. And we stayed together for like a few more years. And... Uh, I don't know. Hold on. It was hard. It was hard to let go. Even though I think we both knew it. Um... I just don't think we were the same people we were when we first started. You know, we were together for like five, six years. Um, people change, people grow apart, which is fine. You know, but I think there's a a way to go about it that's like respectful and with integrity. And you can't always expect that from people, you know? So uh, our breakup wasn't awful. Um, it was rough. It was hard to, to give it up. I was so young because I think that was like my first really long-term serious relationship and i was really trying my hardest to make it work right up up until her i'd kind of just been running around and i was uh i don't want to say hard to nail down i was just having a good time and i wouldn't stick around very long and when i got with her i told myself like i'm gonna make it work i can be a good boyfriend i can do this you know i can be with just her and that's it and i really like her you know so i really want to be the best boyfriend I can be and 
I don't think I don't think I failed at that. I just think, like I said, we grew we grew apart. You know, we wanted different things. Um, all the the passion and the lust and things like that that you have in the beginning kind of fades out, and then you're kind of left with everything else. And if you don't have a solid bedrock, then you're ah, fuck. Your chances is gonna go way down. You know, one of the things I say pretty frequently now is that as I as I continue to date is that you spend more time not fucking than you do fucking so you need to make sure that that time feels just as good or better than when you are fucking and if you do then the fucking is even better you know I know this is kind of a crude way to put it you know I'm not exactly like fucking Socrates out here this philosophy how eloquent I'm stating it but I think I'm on to something, right? Um, probably sounds like common knowledge to a lot of people. But as a young man, like your your dick makes a lot of decisions for you, right? It can kind of blind you from making like wise decisions. You have like lower standards. Oh, she's she's just fucking hot, right? That's all. That's all you really give a shit about. I'll put up with all the other stuff. You know, especially when you're like a teenager. Your early 20s, you know, it's all about fucking stat padding, you know, <laughs> bragging to your boys or like feeding your ego. Shit. Ah, come on, guys. Uh, but back to my little story, what I was saying is, uh, so I broke up with this girl and, uh, we, that wasn't the end of it. It was like, it was like a tumultuous off and on, like a uh, seesaw, whether or not we were going to get back together. Because I did still very much care for her, but um, it just wasn't working for me. And I think once I broke up with her, she kind of realized that it wasn't working for her either. You know, but we both had a hard time letting go completely. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Oh, fuck, I'm about to die. I'm about to die, I'm about to die. Drink, drink, drink. Okay. Um, so afterwards... Like, to kind of distract myself. Well, I immediately started trying to date to, like, replace her, which is wrong thinking that I know now, you know? Because, you know, you're looking for someone to be kind of like this other person, and that's never going to be the case, you know? Um, there are definitely instances where I was just, like, running around, and... Uh... Pfft. I was I was definitely going out and getting fucked up. But I'll pass out, go to sleep next to somebody and wake up. And you know those few moments before you really wake up? You're like you're waking up, but your eyes are still closed and you're gathering yourself and figuring out what's what. In those moments, I could tell someone was in my bed and I wasn't alert enough to know that it wasn't her. So I'd think she was in the bed with me and then I'd wake up and it's like completely different person and I would be disappointed you know and it just wasn't a good feeling you know oh hold on this asshole these motherfuckers I'm spending too much time right in my mouth all right all right come on ah oh, I'm out of drink uh I'm probably gonna have to come back down here Poisoned. Come on. Come on. Alright, what do I do? Shit. You two fucking assholes. It's so hard to see him, too. Alright, let me see. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. So, like I was saying, I was just kind of like running around. And, uh, 
I eventually realized that I was like actually hurting a lot of feelings, you know, these girls or my own feelings because I was expecting, you know, I was just disappointed that the girl that I actually wanted to be there wasn't there, you know, and I wasn't really, I was just kind of spinning my wheels. Um, and I didn't really like these girls as people, you know, it was just something to distract from how I was feeling, which isn't a good thing. You know, I wasn't processing my feelings. Uh, so I stopped dating for like a long time for a long, long time. Um, and it wasn't until like the last few years when I started dating again. Uh, with the girl I started dating, she wasn't, <laughs> she ended up not being super cool, you know? But I'm trying to concentrate too. Uh, and letting that bad experience uh, affect a new relationship is the kind of shit I'm trying to avoid, you know? You gotta deal with people who are shitty and end up letting you down, disappointing you, you know? It's unavoidable, it's part of life. Learning how to manage it is a skill that I think is very much necessary. All right, come on, come on. All right, dude, your turn. Come on. Ah. All right. All right. Drink, drink, drink. All right. These spiders are kicking my ass. All right. Yeah, all that is to say is I need to take a little break from social media. And I think we all do from time to time. You know? Shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Up, up. Uh, uh. Come on. Okay, where are you? Where are you guys? Uh, there's another one. Where are you guys? Monty, you little shit. Alright. Bet you weren't expecting uh, a little bit of dating advice, huh? In your Black Myth Wukong playthrough. All right, don't listen to me. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm figuring it out too. All right. All right. Let me see. I hope you take some of my. I don't want to call it wisdom. That sounds arrogant. <laughs> but some of my experience. Oh shit. Turn into something good, right? Avoid my mistakes. And one of the biggest things, too, that helped me. I want to throw this in there, too. <laughs> uh, I got from Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill is a fucking legend, right? And a lot of the shit he says is kind of coarse. And you don't get like a spoonful of sugar with this medicine, but it is medicine. And this, I think this applies to guys and girls. You need to know when to pull the plug. You know, when somebody, it does not have your best interests at heart. You need to know when to fucking take your ball and go home. You know, he was giving a little bit of advice. Uh, it was a dude who had been friend zoned. And he was trying to 
ask. Yeah, Patrice had a radio show. It's called Black Phillip. You know? And, uh, people call in with their relationship stuff and ask his advice and ask for help and, like, you know, opinions. And, uh, because he was a comedian, like, people, some people kind of thought he was, like, a clown or a buffoon or whatever, and he's not. He's, like, super intelligent. I feel like a lot of comedians are very good at, like, observations and pattern recognitions and things like that. You know? And pointing out things that you probably walk past every day. Like, filtering it through, like, oh, shit, shit, shit. Their little lens and making it funny, you know? That takes a very high level of intelligence to do it really well, you know? Um, so people who wrote him off as just, like, kind of a fucking buffoon or a, a clown, like... Found out pretty quickly anytime they tried to fucking talk to him. Oh shit. Uh. 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 Oh, oh. Come on. Damn it. Shit, this guy's fucking my shit up. Whoa. Whoa, what the fuck? Oh shit, I already used the crank, huh? Alright. Test form. Huh. So this dude called in. I think I can deal with this guy. This dude calls in and he talks about this girl who he's friends with, who he's into, but she's made it very clear that she just wants to be friends, which is fine. But he said that every time they would go out, like go to the bar and go to the clubs and stuff, she would get really lovey-dovey and want to like hang all over him and act like they were together and so on and so forth. And... Uh, I think Patrice pretty much just told, like, no, you get the fuck out of there. Like, she's doing that shit for her own ego. Like, that's vanity. Uh, and she's probably doing that to demonstrate to everyone else, like, to make herself feel sexy, you know? And she doesn't give a fuck about how that shit makes you feel. You know, even though she knows you have feelings for her, she is unconcerned with that. Hold on. I'm gonna take this guy's soul. And the best way to put it is like, you're on different pages. You should be able to just say like, well, you should just pull the plug, you know? You don't wanna live in her friend zone. Don't try and earn your way and prove your way that like, you're gonna be the guy for her. You know, you're gonna end up fucking jumping through hoops for nothing. <clears throat> you know, end up feeling you and the best way the th fucking the thing you said that made the most sense is men and women we the way we view these situations is it's kind of like m they mirror each other and he was like the the ultimate symbol of a female's affection typically like their exceptions to the rule but typically uh it's, it's their body, right? When they love you, like, that intimacy is expressed through through sex and physical, uh, physical intimacy, right? Uh, that's not how we as men are wired. Like, we give our bodies away freely. Like, we, we're designed to like want to spread our seed far and wide and fuck all kinds of chicks you know when we as men uh where the fuck am i when we as men 
step out and like sleep with somebody else like yes it's a betrayal but it doesn't have the same significant meaning to us as it would like spending time and making the effort for another woman you know <clears throat> when it comes to the friend zone you'll have everybody every dude either has been or knows a dude who has a girl who he's into who he's running back and forth trying to prove that he's boyfriend material right she'll call you up come help her move her couch from the basement to the fucking roof come kill this spider come listen to me talk about my day come listen to me complain about the dude that i actually am fucking you know and you're doing everything you can to open her eyes that like we're doing everything but fucking like i'm basically your boyfriend you know but once she sees you like that you very it's very rare that you can get out of that shit and that's what he was saying but on the flip-flop on the female side of things every girl either knows or has been uh the chick who hooked up with a dude um before she really knew what he was about or what he wanted and she wants him to be her man and she just can't get him to settle down you know she can't get him to be anything more than than a fuck buddy you know and then he turns around he fucking wipes up some other chick and she can't figure out why that's their version of the friend zone But I mean, they also have like the regular friend zone too. <laughs> the dude's just not inter interested in, I had a roommate that, like that was kind of the situation he was dealing with. Uh, he was in medical school and one of his, his classmates was into him. And like, she would come over and they would hang out. I think they were like study buddies and stuff like that. And she was very clearly into him, but like, he was just like, not about it. All right, warm guy. Shit. Come on. Oh, that's a face. Are you shooting that shit out of your ass? No, no. Come on. Alright, alright. Need some stamina back. Ooh. Ugh, fuck. Alright. Come on. Alright, alright. Alright. Come on, Frank. I think this guy counts as like a mini boss, right? Alright, let's transform. so tough Ooh, oh okay I think we did it all right there's some place I can go now I got some out of here nope On your feet already, are you? Best keep clear of this mess. It's for your own good. Go find the pig. 
before it's too late. That's right. We were looking for our our pig friend. It's a bad idea to remove this. Where is the pig? Just go. Go, go, go. Just go. Nope. Don't have time for you, sir. Just gonna... There's something down here, right? Is there a boss? Boss fight. Centipede Gwai. Ooh. You're not friendly. Shit. Look how much damage he does. Ooh. 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 Frank, get him. Oh, this guy's creepy. Ah. Come on. Let's go. We got some more in the tank. Ah. You got this. You got it. Shit. Let's go, monkey. Let's go, monkey. Let's go, monkey. Uh. Uh-uh. No more poison. Mm-mm. Shit. Uh, maximum health. I'll take some of this. What about that? Come on. What is that? What? What just happened? I think we can get him this time. What the fuck? What, what's going on? Oh, he's calling a bunch. Call up your homies. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright. Uh-uh. One more. Nope, nope, no, nope, nope, no poison. I can't move. Okay. Cut on the wall or something. Come on. Ah, uh, it's gonna roll into a ball. Nope. Ugh. Come on. Ah, right, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Mm -mm. Bitch. Uh, and we took down the Yaguai centipede chief guy. All right, and now he belongs to us. And I think that's a solid note to end an episode on, guys. Oh, 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 oh. We are poisoned though. Uh, let me think. I don't know where I'm supposed to go after this. Uh, but I'm gonna figure it out next time. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, leave me a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, shit. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.